As promised, we are back here at the Teaching Garden at Woodward Park, and joining me again is Director of Horticulture, Andy Fusco, and we're back to kind of reevaluate the trials. Yeah, and welcome back. I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed you haven't killed any of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it is quite shocking. We thought that, you know, maybe uh, one or two would not quite make it through our Oklahoma heat, but so far, so good. If you look closely, you can find some that are doing a little less good than the others, but none are doing bad. Okay, remind us again of what was the maintenance. I mean, it wasn't a traditional trial. They're not right. randomized or, so some did maybe get a little more shade on this uh, further west side. Yeah, so as the sun moves this way, some get more shade than others. But other than that, they get the same watering and okay. a little bit of slow release fertilizer when we plant them. Uh, and other than that, they're treated like any other bedding plant that we have in the garden. Okay. And they've really taken off and been a huge showstopper this year. We've gotten so many questions about them. And I think, again, like we talked about uh, earlier in the summer, is that most people think they know begonias until you see them all side by side. And there's really a lot of variety. And I, and I know one of the ones that you mentioned last time, and I'm not going to hold you uh, this against you, was at first you kind of like top hat, right? Yeah. Um, it seems to be one, maybe one that's not as floriferous right now anyway. Right. It at least didn't fill in. And so uh, we're kind of looking to see if that was more on our end, an mm -hmm. irrigation issue or maybe a fertilizer issue, or, or maybe it really just didn't uh, do as well in the heat. Okay. Um, some of the others that, you know. I was keeping my eye on, but they've really taken off uh, and have kept a lot of flowers and all of that good stuff. We, you know, we had 50 varieties that we planted uh, and each of those 50 varieties had their own flats. So we had some extras. Okay. And so we, we planted them in some other areas of the garden too, some fun hanging baskets and whatnot. And we found that they did just as well in the shade as they did in this full sun. So okay. that was a really nice because these are well. full sun begonias, yeah. but you saw that they did just as well. In yeah, the shade too. Uh, and there's a lot of houseplant begonias that prefer more shade. Mm -hmm. And so um, we thought that some of these would probably do okay in the shade, and they did. They had bigger leaves and less flowers, but still beautiful displays in okay. the garden. So we got better foliage out of it that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but is there any that people have definitely, you know, named or mentioned to you that seem to be kind of rising to the top of the ones you, you have You know, here? I think the one that's really standing out to me and so it's probably stuck in my head more when people mention it is the big series, the okay. big pink and the big red. And I think they probably are the ones that get shaded in that hot afternoon sun. So they got that little bit of a, you know, a, a handicap if yeah. you're into golf. <laughs> uh, but still really showstoppers, big flowers, big leaves, kind of all around uh, best case scenario. And, and they are a bigger plant too, it yes. seems, whether that's from the shade or actually just the way it's supposed to be, but they're a little bit less compact and kind of that roundy look that maybe you might see on some yeah, of the older they, traditional ones. They tend to stand up taller too without flopping. Right. Because uh, sometimes that's the problem with some of these uh, tender perennials is that they'll get tall and then this time of year they get too heavy for their own good and they fall over and nobody wants that either. Okay, okay. So. Well, and I know sometimes they say leaf color kind of plays into how well they're gonna do in the summertime. Yeah. Have you seen anything related to that? A little bit, some of the varieties back here, I noticed that the bronze leaves did hold up in the heat a little better than the green varieties. But still, I don't think if, if they weren't side by side, I probably wouldn't have noticed that the green leaves were doing any worse. It's okay. just when they're here and we're taking an extra magnifying glass on them that you can really tell the difference. Right, so you're not really gonna go wrong with any of these. No, it doesn't really look aren't. Like um, they are all doing fantastic, so you get to kind of basically really select what color and what leaf and what leaf color you want, yeah. right? There's really something for everybody. I mean, uh, you know, there's a Goldilocks plant for each of us. You know? <laughs> Excellent, great for customizing our yeah. garden. Thank you for sharing this, and it looks like you've done a beautiful job this summer. Yeah, and I hope you'll come back next year. Uh, we're already working on uh, what we're gonna do out here next year. It'll be a new variety of bedding plants and at least 15 more varieties. So. Any hints as to what it might be? Uh, not begonias, <laughs> something that uh, is mildly hardy, okay. so. All right, well, we'll stay tuned. Yeah. Thank you so uh -huh. much, Andy. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.